let's take a look at some of the information that actually makes up a color. It should be helpful for people that have trouble discerning the difference between, for example, a dark shade of purple and a dark shade of blue. To begin, click on the color picker over here on the left, so the color chip that's in the foreground will bring up the color picker window, and set the value for C to 100 M to 0, Y to 0, and K to 0. This little tutorial is really going to just deal with the CMYK values of the color, just so you are aware. Each one of these sections is just a different way of looking at the same color. These are different color modes. This is a hex number that you can actually copy from one program to another to get this same color. In the printing world, which is what CMYK is used for, cyan is really the blue of the primary colors. And if you s notice, this is the new blue that we've got. That changed when we loaded up that 100%. So 100% of cyan is kind of this bright blue, which is different than the blue you're used to seeing on your color wheel. The next one we can see by changing C to 0, and let's change magenta to 100. So magenta is really the brightest pink that your printer would ever be able to produce. And you can think of magenta as the red in printing. And if we set that to zero, yellow's pretty obvious. Instead of saying typing in 100 this time, I'm going to click on the Y and just drag to the right. 100% yellow is really straightforward. Clicking on the Y and dragging to the left to get it to zero. Now K stands for key, but for our intents and purposes that means black. So grab that K and bring it all the way to the right, that's black. Now if you think about these numbers as paint that you get to mix together, it might make a little more sense. For example, when you're a kid and you took the yellow paint and the blue paint and mixed them together, my guess is you got a green paint. So I'm going to pull up a green by just clicking here on this outside ring of the wheel. The colors I get are represented by this information, and this literally means that when it's printing, it's going to put down 85% cyan, 13% magenta, 100% yellow, and 2% black, or roughly that equivalent. And we can tell that this is going to be a really yellow green because there's a lot of yellow in it, and there's a lot of cyan in it. So I'm looking at the two with the highest com combinations, and I know that that's a green just from those numbers. If I couldn't see this, I'd still be able to tell, well, this is pretty much a green because yellow mixed with blue is going to be green. To darken colors, you can add black, which is really easy. To tone color down, you can try adding one of the other, um, one of the other colors. What I wanted to show you for sure though was that if you click on a dark purple here, and let's take a look at the colors. So here we've got a lot of blue, 100% magenta. So this tells me right here that this color is going to be a little bit more purple than blue. Now if this was the other way around, I'm going to move this down to about 80 Oh, I don't know, about 80. And then this one up to 100. I can tell just from looking at these numbers that this is more a blue than a purple because the blue color here is stronger than the magenta. This technique can pretty much stand the test of anything you throw at it. This is especially useful for me when I have created a project and I like the way it looks on the screen, but my printer prints it out maybe with the blues looking purple. If I want those blues to look truly blue and not purple, then I can come in and adjust the color by taking out maybe 20% of that magenta. And then if I need to darken it back to where it was, because you'll notice that change made this to a brighter blue, I can add more black. Now you may not have noticed, but this 
bottom part of the color previewer is actually the original color that we started with. So if I'm going to, uh, let's see, let's see, push cancel. I'm going to choose the dark purple here. Okay. Now when I click on that and come in, that will be loaded to the bottom and when I ch start fiddling around I can see the difference between the two. And this is very useful for when I need to make a blue that is just as dark as this purple. So I'm going to make a blue by cranking the cyan up, pulling the magenta down quite a bit. Um, I can just tell you from my printing experience that combinations with a hundred percent cyan and anything over about 65 magenta will actually print looking a little bit purple. So I'm going to pull down my magenta as far as 60 and then to get it dark again I'll add black. And I'm watching this color as I change it and as soon as it's really hard to tell where that line is between the two, I know I have a blue that's about as dark as that original purple. So there's a couple tricks from the printing trade for you. I hope that was useful. Let's hit OK and I'll show you just a couple of the color panels in Photoshop and then we'll wrap this up. So go to Window and choose Color. Your color probably pops up showing RGB and you can move these sliders around. This is the same information that we were just looking at. This is just a different way to choose color. And you'll notice as I click and drag one of these it'll actually change my color over here. So whatever you change here it will change your main color. You can change what uh, color combo you're looking at by clicking on the drop down menu. And I'm going to change mine to CMYK since that's what we're talking about and this might be a little bit more visual for you so you can see on the far side of this what this color would actually look more like if I added red to it. So this is useful when you're trying to figure out like a brown for example because brown is kind of a hard color to figure out where the mix is. So here I've got quite a bit of cyan, quite a bit of magenta and actually quite a bit of yellow in that. So with my yellow high and my other two high and maybe a little bit of black I end up with a rich brown. The other color panel to look at is probably swatches which comes preloaded with quite a few swatches. You do have more ways of looking at this panel if you click on the drop down you can look at it as large thumbnails or a list. This will give you the names of these that have come preloaded and I believe if you create new swatches let's see what it's called let's go new swatch it will give you the option to name it so I could call this brown one and there it is what would be really awesome is if it would let you display what the CMYK value is which another program does but this one does not. But uh, let me point out just a last couple feature to here. If you go back to the drop down it actually has a lot of these color um, color palette things that you can pick from. So for example Pantone is the major ink provider out there and uh, if you have a Pantone um, swatch book it will give you very specific colors that you can request for materials to be made in and know you're going to get that color. But if I wanted to use for example CMYK coded which is typical for printing I'm going to say OK add this to it and I'm going to not save my original then all of a sudden here are my Pantone colors. So if you're working on a project where you need to order Pantone inks this is where you can go to load those colors. Now there's going to be a ton of stuff in here so if you want to ever reduce the amount of things in your swatch panel you can come back here and just say reset swatches and click OK and that will put it right back to how they originally were.